purpose of the wicking pad is to provide a passage or path for air displacement during the evacuation of the outer and inner envelopes during the vacuuming process. Apply the wicking pad transversely and centrally under the envelope valve. Make sure that there is an equal length of venting pad on either side of the centerline of the tread. It's necessary to ensure both ends will fold around the beads of the tire to evacuate the inner envelope during the vacuuming process. Hook the lip of the front skirt over all the jaws of the spreader arms, starting at the top. Spread the envelope wide enough to enable the built tire outside diameter to enter the envelope with ease. Lift the tire vertically, using mechanical integral or remote hoist, with the venting pad in the 12 o'clock position to align with the envelope valve. Push the tire into the outer envelope until the rear sidewall of the tire is hard against the rear skirt of the envelope making sure the wicking pad lines up with the valve in the 12 o'clock position. Using the hoist lower the enveloped tire to floor level. At this point make sure the outer envelope is centrally positioned on the tire so that both skirts come down to the same position on each sidewall, adjust manually if necessary by pulling on the skirts of the envelope. Transfer the tire to the tilting table and lower into position on one half, or leaf, of the table. Lay the selected inner envelope flat on top of the upper sidewall of the tire. Now insert the whole of the inner envelope inside the tire until flat against the inner lower sidewall. Then pull out the upper skirt, or flap, full circle whilst at the same time pulling it into position against the bead of the tire and smoothing to remove folds and wrinkles. Make sure the wicking pad is taut and tucked over and under the bead toe. Now whilst lifting the skirt of the outer envelope tuck the flap of the inner envelope underneath the skirt of the outer envelope progressively full circle. With the ends of the fingers push the sealing rib of the inner envelope as far up the sidewall of the tire as possible to make sure the flap is pulled against the bead profile of the tire. Flip the tire over on the tilting table and repeat steps with the other side. With the enveloped tire in the horizontal position on the tilting table connect a flexible vacuum line to the envelope valve on the outer envelope. Draw vacuum in the range minus 0.6 to minus 0.8 bars until the inner and outer envelope assembly is fully evacuated. Check for any loss of seal by shutting off the vacuum line valve and checking the downstream vacuum gauge to detect any drop in held vacuum due to leakage. If necessary a mechanical aid can be used to help establish and speed up air evacuation of envelopes. Once the seal is established transfer the pre-vacuumed tire to the autoclave loader monorail. Disconnect the pre-vacuum line and connect the vacuum line from the monorail manifold onto the envelope valve. Again check the integrity of the vacuum seal by closing the vacuum line valve and checking the downstream vacuum gauge to detect any vacuum loss. The tires should have been presented to the loader monorail in descending order of size so that they will be subsequently loaded into the autoclave largest first and smallest last. Following cold start, in the case of the first cure, or following on from the previous cure, open the autoclave door only when all residual pressure has been released from within. Start the autoclave vacuum pump and close all the three-way valves on the vacuum manifold. Make sure that there is vacuum present on the master gauge of the autoclave manifold within the range minus 0.6 to minus 0.8 bars. 
Lower the monorail link rail into position. Disconnect the vacuum hose on the loader monorail manifold from the envelope valve of the first tire and load into the rearmost position within the autoclave. Connect the flexible vacuum hose at position 1 within the autoclave and open the vacuum valve on the autoclave manifold also at position 1. Once maximum vacuum has been established on the manifold gauge at position 1 momentarily close the three-way valve and check for any loss of vacuum. If no vacuum loss occurs reopen the vacuum valve and leave in the open position i.e. drawing vacuum. Load each subsequent tire in turn repeating the procedure as described for the first tire until the last tire is loaded. When the last tire has been loaded into the autoclave and the vacuum checked the autoclave door can be closed and locked in position. Following completion of the cure cycle the autoclave control system will shut off the heating and exhaust the air within automatically. When the internal pressure of the autoclave reaches zero, the safety locking device will retract to allow the door to be opened.